Hello and welcome back. Today, what I thought was going to be a wash. We had an incredible rainstorm this morning. Didn't take any video of it because there's nothing to see. It's just rain. Today, I'm going to be getting on the mill. I've got all this wood racked up and most of it is for the barn addition. And I'm going to start doing some milling for this today. I'm going to get some six by sixes cut for my main supports on the outside because we are going to be doubling the size of this structure. So I'm gonna get on my mill for a bit and I'm gonna get some six by sixes milled up and then I'll probably start on the endless task of milling two by eights because this whole entire pile that's in front of me, boom, that's all gonna be two by eights because that's what the is gonna support the roof. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify which trees are perfect for six by sixes. I find it's easiest to cut large timber like that out of just a little bit larger diameter wood. So something like this is probably perfect for a six by six. I get a little bit of wood around the outside and I get one piece out of it. It's easy to do. If I was to try to get a six by six out of this, be a lot of work. And yes, I'd get more six by sixes, but I think the utilization of that wood can be used much better cutting um, smaller timber. So yeah, I'm gonna go with my marking paint and I'm going to mark the posts that I can get six by six out of that are both long enough. They have to be, they technically have to be nine feet and uh, they have to be wide enough to get a proper post out. Six, 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 six. That's just big enough for a proper six by six. Six, six. It's a possibility. I'm gonna try to get this one into a six by six as well. And the worst thing that happens is if I fail, I'll just cut two by sixes out of it. No big deal. smooth as a porcupine. <laughs> Now I think you can see why I prefer to do this out of small timber. I'll show you what's left over. So I've got teeny little slabs. Now I could probably cut a couple stickers out of those, but I don't have the time. That is a good utilization of wood. And a lot of people don't realize that the heart in the wood can cause warpage. So if I was to cut this board right along here, the heart is the little centerpiece right there. If I was to cut this board right along there, which I've cut many of them that way, um, when it dries, it warps. But if you isolate the heart in the center of the board, 
it stays true and straight. So I'm gonna have five of those holding up the 12 by 12 by 42 addition to the old sawmill shack. That is gonna be the new animal barn. Beautiful. So the six by six that I'm cutting are actually five and a half by five and a half. I figured with some of the smaller wood that I had, five and a half would be easier to cut without having a whole bunch of wane on the edge. Um, so, I mean, five and a half by five and a half is a strong post still. So I'm gonna figure out what I can get out of here, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get more, be able to get a, maybe a couple two by fours. I do need a whole bunch of one inch strapping for the sheet metal roof that's gonna go on top of that. So probably get some of that out of this as well. So there's my square right here where I'm gonna get my five by five. I've got my, my heartwood um, centered in the middle of the post. So that leaves me with, I can get a one by at the top and probably another one by out the, to out the top here. It's no big deal. Two extra boards on, on one piece of timber. That's great. There we have it, folks. I got some stickers. I've got some one by strapping, three six by sixes, very little waste. I mean, all trees have waste because you cut a round tree into square timber. But the trick is just getting it as minimal as possible pretty happy with that I'm gonna get some more logs so here we go I've got three more six by sixes I ended up cutting six of them because I always seem to be short so if I add a little bit into my my cut pile it's never gonna hurt and I mean a six by six is good for lots of things and for worse comes the worst I got three two by sixes so we're good I'm gonna go rack these up and we're gonna go take a look at what I cut today in about two pretty lazy hours. And there we have it. Six, six by sixes, three, one by fours, and 10 stickers for two hours of chilling by myself on my mail. Well, good morning. A beautiful spring morning out here today it is it's supposed to rain pretty good today which I'm fine with because we have a 10 day stretch of sunshine which is gonna be so exciting so we've got lots of things that we're preparing for out here the first thing we're gonna do today the first thing I'm gonna do Katie's editing all day is I'm prepping for this that is two acres of fencing because those dogs like to go on their own adventures and we've got dangerous predators out here and i don't want my dogs running into the forest we're gonna get a two acre perimeter fence set up but in order to do that there is some work I have to do first. That is a lot of pine 
that we've got to clean up. So what I'm going to do is today is an awesome day to have a big old fire and get that ponderosa pine branches, big pile of garbage over there, burnt up and ready for a fence. Okay, so here's the plan. All that faffing about to get these over here because I can't really pick them up right now. I'm gonna have to cut this one down. Problem is, I want all that for saw wood and I can't move it with my tractor. So that means I can't move it unless I move it in eight foot lengths. So, I don't know, I gotta figure that out later. But I gotta get this stuff all dealt with here. And I wanna burn it. Even though Katie wants to chip it, I'll tell you why chipping Ponderosa isn't a good idea. Try feeding those squiggly wiggly branches into a wood chipper, a six inch wood chipper. I'm sure an industrial size one would be no problem, but it doesn't work very well. They, uh, they, you stick it in and where, where the branch turns, it'll flip the thing over and smack you in the face. It's kind of dangerous. And that's coming from me. So I'm gonna go get some fire starter and see if I can't get this thing going.
finally got some flames going. I had to go get a couple pieces of dry firewood and then it now something is actually burning. So it's going to start drying out all of the wet branches and we're finally getting some flame. Hi. Have a fire hot enough to dry wet wood. I still have a lot left. But once I get this thing roaring, hot fires burn fast. So I think it's gonna get there. There are about four trillion things that are worse to do than this today.
It's me. It's just me. Stupid guineas. Okay, so we've got this section all cleaned up. I've got those logs to move, this pile of ash to move, and then I have to do some, I have to build a bit of a road around the backside of this hill here uh, so that we can easily install our fencing and actually do some maintenance on it as well, which is important for our fencing on a hillside. So might be some sketchy work with the tractor today because that's a steep hill and I'm not making it very big. It's going to be just enough for the tractor to go because I don't even really want it that big, but um, that's the tool I've got and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to try, to, I'm going to get this uh, ash all cleaned up. It's still, still a little bit hot. So I'm going to go get the tractor. Should be warmed up by now. I'm going to get that ash out of here and I'm going to try to move those big logs. Good luck. We'll see how it goes. And then we're going to get the rest of the prep work for the fence to be built soon. Okay, so our fire pit here is gone. Now I gotta take these two logs, these two logs, and take them up to the mill. Now, I tried doing the big one when we, I guess in the fall, and that wasn't working. The, the tractor just didn't have the, the weight of the strength to, to pick it up. But I'm hoping now that winter's come along, hopefully it's lost a little bit of water weight. I can see myself having to cut that log. Well, it seems like lifted. It's pretty heavy. My back end keeps on bumping up. <sighs> this could be sketchy. I'm determined to get this up the hill.
Okay, so here's the plan. That is not a road, but we are bringing a fence through here. I would like to be able to drive the tractor down there. You know that I get myself into these things sometimes. I'm gonna try to go a little bit and see how it goes. If it's sketchy, 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 I'm out of here. I forgot to I forgot to latch my uh, box on my loader. I forgot to latch my bucket on. <laughs> Is that an omen? Maybe that's a sign from God. I don't think so. This is definitely what you don't do with your tractor. <laughs> it's working. It's not the best tool for the job, that's for sure, but it is working. I'm about a quarter of the way, which is good, which is good. And every time I drive over this, it gets more packed down and more packed down. It's good. I'm happy with this.
By the way, we got all of this cleaned up. This was all pine branches down that access. We went and cleared this upper section of the road. All those branches that I had pulled up the bank a few videos ago, we got those burnt, most of them. We kind of left the little ones just because they're kind of just holding the bank together, maybe, hopefully. So we kind of got rid of the big stuff, but the one thing we didn't get was that tree. We could have pulled it up, but we didn't <laughs> work on that another time. Greg thinks that it will be easier to send it down to the road that's down below. But uh, it's looking pretty good here on this road. I think it would be really cool to dig into this bank a little bit and put a little tiny like cabin or like a guest room here. And we can have a rooftop access from our main yard. So we can have like a deck there or something. And then you can take this little road to come down and enter the bedroom or little cabin, whatever it is, hangout space down here. I just think that would be a really cool feature on this property, but because that's a steep bank, we'll have to figure out some safe ways to build in a little bit because we don't want the ground to uh, push the building down the hill. So uh, yeah, I'll have to do a bit of research on that because I have no idea how if that's even possible, but there must be a way and that'd be a really cool spot. fence line and there's Greg I think it's gonna go down here and then over with this pathway we should be able to use the tractor to like tension the uh, fencing material it'll make it a lot easier for us and yeah i'm just really looking forward to having this fencing up because the dogs will take off into the woods and we don't really want that we want the deer and stuff to be able to live in their habitat and have our dogs contained we don't want them going up to our neighbor's house because they have dogs as well and uh, it's just annoying when you have dogs coming running at your house all the time so we want to get this fence done we're going to try and build the, a path just like this on the other side went over towards our neighbor's house where the hill goes up to his place so it's going to be interesting we're hoping to get the bulldozer started for that but greg just started with the tractor and it's going good for now so just going with it see how it ends up <laughs> 